Hello folks, Bo to Bob here. Well, it's Sunday, September 1st. We had our family reunion today in the village of Boonesboro, Maryland. And uh, you'll never guess who I met today. Yeah, that's right, I met Popcorn Sutton on the Appalachian Trail. During my visit to the uh, Washington Monument above the village of Boonesboro, I ran into this character and I asked him what his trail name was and he told me Popcorn. And I said, Popcorn Sutton. He said, that's right. He got a big smile. So I took his picture and here he is. So uh, this was a uh, strategic place during the Civil War, the Battle of Antietam. This is the uh, monument that was built by the 500 people from the town of Boonesboro, July 4th, 1827, only to be burnt down. This is the aftermath, I believe, of uh, General Lee's army set it on fire or burned it somehow. I, get, I see all the mortars gone. So anyhow, interesting history. So I just thought I'd uh, share that with you and sure. have a good day. on my iPhone. Had a family reunion today and uh, if any of you recognize the top of my web, my uh, YouTube channel, this is the this is what you can see in the middle of the picture on my YouTube channel from the town of Boonesboro, Maryland. This is it. And since I was here today on our family reunion, I thought I'd come on up. This is the first monument to George Washington. So, behind the camera today, didn't bring my gimbal. I should have. So, let's go find some facts out about this. Right now, there's not many people up here. This uh, monument is off the Appalachian Trail above the town of Boonesboro. And let's see what we can learn here today. So, Washington Monument, volunteer villagers of the nearby Boonesboro celebrated their Independence Day, July 4th, 1827, by building and dedicating this first monument to the memory of George Washington. Repaired and altered many times over the 100 years by patriotic citizens, it was finally restored to its original design in 1934 to 1936 by the Civilian Conservation Corp, or the CCC. This monument used by the Union Army during the Civil War as a signal station and its surrounding land was bought by the Washington County Historical Society in 1922 and presented to the state of Maryland for park development in 1934. This massive structure was certified a Maryland Historical Monument in March 1972 and a National Historical Monument in November 1972. So, if you're ever down near Antietam, this is near the Antietam battlefield, you can come here and see this place. The 
try not to disturb the other folks coming up to the monument. A couple years ago, this building was struck by lightning, I believe. It looks like it's been repaired because I'll take you up inside the monument here in a little bit. But the uh, building, the monument was closed to the public while it was repaired. Um, it was struck pretty good. So let's take a look here at the... Uh, the Vista. We've got some other people up here with me. Not friends of mine, but just other people visiting the monument in the park. Pretty hazy day, but it makes it for, uh, other than the humidity, very comfortable temperature here on the Labor Day weekend. And this is the village of Boonesboro down below here. And uh, that's the, I believe, high school, their center frame. And I'll try to zoom in. Oh, I'm already zoomed in. Can't do much with an iPhone. I'm going to zoom out. <laughs> So, I think the Antietam battlefield is, is off in this direction, but I can't tell you exactly where it is. I'm not that familiar with the area. So, um, in commemoration of the first complete monument dedicated to the memory of George Washington, citizens of Boonesboro on July 4. 1827 marched behind the stars and stripes to this site and built the tower to 15 feet. They returned to complete the monument in September of that year, placed on the Maryland State Society Daughters of American Revolution State Regent, October 15th, 2011. I want to take you up the stairs here. This is a very narrow staircase and very steep climb. Coming up. Thank you. There's a handrail here. <laughs> One hand with the phone. Let's see if I can turn the light on. Pretty cool structure. Be a neat place to take your kids. I think I came here as a kid. Let's see if we can find out how tall this building is. Ah, uh, here we go. So this is a good place to see raptors, apparently. Late September to November, thousands of hawks and eagles migrate past the, the monument here.
So that straight line way out there, it's in the center of screen. That's the dual highway. I believe that was the first divided highway in the United States, US Route 40. Around here it's called the dual highway. That heads over to Hagerstown, Maryland. Hazy day here hard to see anything. Let's see if I can steady my camera without dropping it. This phone's been through a lot. <laughs> there it is. The dual highway. I like this place. I like to come here. Look out below. Funny, when I was in Europe, and went to castles and stuff like that in Europe. They always had these brush, not brush piles, but piles of rocks below the castle. Just like here. I guess that's a leftover stuff from the stone masons. They just threw it down there. Probably the same way they did in Europe. Interesting. That's clear up in Pennsylvania, ain't it? On a clear day, I can see Russia from here. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they used this for, uh, during the war. Yeah. It so. said down there, Civil War. Yeah. And Marker, yeah. My, um, my father, he grew up in Boonesboro. They found a sea cog. You know, one of them seashells that you can blow into? Uh -huh. he, they found it in this area. We often wondered if it was... Um, Warning system? If it was a signaling device used during the war. Yeah. Because why else would there be a, right. a great big huge seashell uh, in, in this? Yeah. I don't know where he found it. I'll have to ask him. Well, the, the ocean levels were a lot higher. So, I mean, that's not unheard of for, for no, and, and I've wondered about oh, that because you can it, see it's more probable of it being a signal, Mickey, Mom. like a horn, like a signal. Yeah, but then again, they might have used brass, <laughs> a brass horn. I'd, why would you use a seashell? But then again, you might use what you have. I got you in the back. I don't know. It's just really strange, you know. I often wondered if it wasn't something from Whoa. leftover from a time that was. Um, uh, yeah, cool, when it? the oceans were higher. Um, and, and another possibility is with the Appalachian Trail here, most of our roads, most of our Appalachian Trails and everything are Indian uh, roads and stuff like that would have been like a currency of, of the Native Americans. Oh, okay. So that could have been lost in trade. Right. Uh, that's another, another theory, another possibility. Never thought of that one. I mean, that's they use like wampum and like conch shells and mm -hmm. seashells and all kinds of things like that as trade also. Interesting. Nice cup of coffee up there, would be nice. A hammock? <laughs> a hammock and a sleep bag and a cup of coffee. That'd be sad.